Imagine a line passing through the center of Earth that goes through both the North and South Poles. This imaginary line is called an axis. Earth spins around its axis, just as a top spins around its spindle. This spinning movement is called Earth's rotation. Earth's rotation is a side effect of the formation of our solar system, which is supposed to have started as a massive cloud of gas and dust roughly 4.6 billion years ago. The cloud began to rotate as it scrunched together under its own gravity. The material at the center eventually became the sun, while whirlpools of dust and gas farther out spun faster and faster until they formed into planets. With nothing to stop its spinning motion, Earth retained the rotation from its early days. So imagine the big ball is the sun, and imagine the smaller ball is the Earth. So, I mean, don't worry about proportion because this is not accurate <laughs> at all. The Earth is rotating. One rotation we know is a day. But for someone in space, pretend my finger is the person in space. If they are just observing the Earth's rotation, then they will see that it is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. But you have to consider that the Earth is rotating and orbiting the Sun at the same time. The Earth needs to spin a little extra to account for the Sun's motion relative to the Earth. And this is the extra 4 minutes or so, making it 24 hours. Our planet's rotation is actually decreasing because of the Moon's gravitational pull. But don't worry, it'll take millions of years for us to notice that our days and nights are just a bit longer. The Earth's speed along the equator is at 1,037 miles per hour, close to a fighter jet speed at full cruise. The Earth spins fastest at the equator because that's where the Earth is widest along its axis. So any point along the equator has a greater distance to travel during each daily rotation than any point closer to the poles. Still confused? Think of a merry-go-round. The horses on the outside have a greater distance to travel around the carousel, and thus move faster than the horses on the inside. Space stations like NASA build their launch pads closer to the equator to take advantage of the planet's faster rotation, which gives rockets and shuttles a speed boost into orbit. And now, you might be wondering, why don't I feel the Earth spinning? Well, there are two reasons, gravity and the fact that you're traveling at the same speed as the ground beneath your feet. We're all moving with the Earth at the same constant speed, which is why we can't feel the rotation. Just as airplane passengers don't sense the forward motion of the aircraft they're riding in, unless it like suddenly speeds up or slows down, we don't notice the rate of Earth's rotation. We're traveling along Earth's surface as it spins and held to the surface by its gravity, along with the atmosphere around us, the bicycles and cars on the road, and the birds in the sky. So what did we cover today? We went over the Earth's rotation, which is essentially the Earth spinning on its axis. We learned the difference in time between the Earth's rotation in space versus the Earth's rotation on Earth. We learned the speed of Earth's rotation along the equator, about a thousand miles per hour, and why it goes faster near the equator, and why space stations build their launch pads closer there too. And finally, the reason why you don't feel the Earth spinning is because you are spinning along with the Earth at the same speed, and also because of gravity.